If you really want to solve some of the world's greatest problems, you've got to have people that can deal with complexity, uh, who will be interactive, and yet at the same time bring their disciplinary excellence to those problems. When I was considering coming uh, to UCL, I was deeply impressed by the Grand Challenges. The UCL's mechanism for bringing together researchers from many different disciplines to really try and tackle the big problems that the world is facing. Our current Grand Challenges are fourfold. They are in um, global health, uh, sustainable cities, intercultural interaction, and human well-being. And those are the four areas where we think we've got tremendous expertise from right across UCL. There are big problems that we can't solve as an individual discipline and we need to work across boundaries and with, with other people. And what's fantastic about UCL is the make, way it makes it really easy to, to do that. The money is there to help people do that, to, to help kickstart new projects. And that's what makes UCL a very exciting place to work. Hi, I'm James Wilson from the Department of Philosophy. I'm Ed Fotrell from the Institute for Global Health. I'm Jill Morrison, also from the Institute for Global Health at UCL. Globally, about two-thirds of the deaths in the world are not counted, and so we don't know the cause of death. Um, not surprisingly, perhaps those deaths are in the world's poorest countries, where this information is absolutely crucial to planning health services and interventions. A process of verbal autopsy is used in these settings where an interviewer goes to a household and asks family members about the circumstances and signs and symptoms surrounding the death of a loved one. That information then is taken away and is processed to come up with a likely cause of death. That processing and a diagnosis of cause of death traditionally would take a very long time, sometimes months, sometimes years. I had the idea to merge the data collection tool or the questionnaire, if you like, for the verbal autopsy with our analytical software onto a mobile phone to create an app that captures the data but also processes it in real time to give you a cause of death. This project started from a very epidemiological public health point of view but it became apparent very quickly that there are lots of ethical issues that I'm not qualified to think about and deal with and so you know, linking up with a social scientist with a philosopher was absolutely essential. We have a research site in Nepal um, and so we thought it was quite a good research site to use to explore some of these issues and collect data um, on the ethical issues. So that's when somebody suggested that I contact with James. I found it really fascinating being involved because often as an ethicist you come along very much at the end of the story. It's as if sort of people have produced a new technology or, or a new regulation has come into force and then you find yourself kind of analysing and thinking, was that a good idea? But this provided me with an opportunity to get in right, involved right at the beginning. The, the biggest ethical issue we, we faced was just that the software that Ed had designed was, uh, was based on a statistical basis so that it can tell you with, with some degree of certainty, maybe 80 or 90 percent, that uh, somebody has died of a particular condition. But then you know, there's a question, is that enough certainty to feed that back to a, to a family? We saw a, a variety of, of different responses from the different sort of focus groups and, uh, and interviews that we, we did. And at the moment, it seems like it probably isn't going to be a very uh, good idea to, to feed back uh, cause of death on a regular basis. Well, the grand challenge is have allowed us to work together um, to, to, look at, to look at an issue in an interdisciplinary way um, and many of many global problems need to be looked at in this interdisciplinary way.